Chapter 10, Good Reasons. The entire mouse community, as instructed by the most very honored head mouse, had gathered behind the wall of the castle ballroom. The members of the mouse council sat atop three bricks piled high and spread out before them was every mouse, young and old, foolish and wise, who lived in the castle. They were all waiting for Despero. Make way, said Furlow. Here he is, I've got him, make way. Furlow pushed through the crowd of mice. Despero clung to his brother's tail. There he is, the mice whispered. There he is, he's so small. They say he was born with his eyes open. Some of the mice pulled away from Despero in disgust, and others, thirst seekers, reached out to touch him with a whisker or a paw. The princess put a finger on him. They say he sat at the foot of the king. It is simply not done, came the distinctive voice of Despero's Aunt Florence. Make way, make way, shouted Furlow. I have him right here. I have Despero Tilling, who has been called to sit with the Mouse Council. He led Despero to the front of the room. Honored members of the Mouse Council, shouted Furlow, I have brought you Despero Tilling, as you requested, to sit with you. He looked over his shoulder at Despero. Let go of me, Furlow said. Despero dropped Furlow's tail. He looked up at the members of the Mouse Council. His father met his gaze, and then shook his head and looked away. Despero turned and faced the sea of mice. To the dungeon, a voice cried out. Straight to the dungeon with him! Despero's head, which had been full of such delightful phrases as happily ever after and lovely ears and I honor you, suddenly cleared. Straight to the dungeon, another voice shouted. Enough, said the most very honored head mouse. This trial will be conducted in an orderly fashion. We will act civilized. He cleared his throat. He said to Despero, son, turn and look at me. Despero turned. He looked up and into the head mouse's eyes. They were dark eyes deep and sad and frightened, and looking into them, Despero's heart thudded once, twice. Despero Tilling, said the head mouse. Yes, sir, said Despero. We, the fourteen members of the mouse council, have discussed your behavior. First, we will give you a chance to defend yourselves against these rumors of your egregious acts. Did you or did you not sit at the foot of the human king? I did, said Despero, but I was listening to the music, sir. I was there to hear the song that the king was singing. To hear the what? The song, sir. He was singing a song about the deep, deep purple falling over sleepy garden walls. The head mouse shook his head. Whatever you are talking about is beside the point. The question is this and only this. Did you sit at the foot of the human king? I did, sir. The community of mice shifted their tails and paws and whiskers. They waited. And did you allow the girl human, the princess, to touch you? Her name is P. Never mind her name. Did you allow her to touch you? Yes, sir, said Despero. I let her touch me. It felt good. A gasp arose from the assembled mice. Despero heard his mother's voice. Mon Dieu! It is not the end of the world. It was a touch. What of it? It is simply not done, came Aunt Florence's voice from the crowd. To the dungeon, said a mouse in the front row. Silence, roared the most very honored head mouse. Silence. He looked down at Despero. Do you, Despero Tilling, understand the sacred, never-to-be-broken rules of conduct for being a mouse? Yes, sir, said Despero. I guess so, but- Did you break them? Yes, sir, said Despero. He raised his voice. But I broke the rules for good reasons, because of music and because of love. Love, said the head mouse. Oh, cripes, said Furlo. Here we go. I love her, sir, said Despero. We are not here to talk about love. This trial is not about love. This trial is about you being a mouse, shouted the most very honored head mouse from high atop the bricks, and not acting like one! Y yes, sir, said Despero. I know. No, I don't think that you do know. And because you do not de deny the charges, you must be punished. You are to be sent, as ancient castle mouse law decrees, to the dungeon. You are being sent to the rats. That's right, shouted a mouse in the crowd. That's the ticket. The dungeon. The rats. Despero's small heart sank all the way to the tip of his tail. There would be no light in the dungeon. No stained glass windows. No library and no books. There would be no Princess P. But first, said the most very honored head mouse, we will give you the chance to renounce your actions. We will allow you to go to the dungeon with a pure heart. Renounce? Repent. 
Say that you are sorry you sat at the foot of the human king. Say that you are sorry you allowed the human princess to touch you. Say that you regret these actions. The squirrel felt hot and then cold and then hot again. Renounce her? Renounce the princess? Mon Dieu! shouted his mother. Son, do not act the fool! Renounce! Repent! What say you, Despero Tilling? I say... I say... I say... No, whispered Despero. What? said the head mouse. No, said Despero. And this time, he did not whisper the word. I am not sorry. I will not renounce my actions. I love her. I love the princess. There was a bellow of collective outrage. The whole of the mouse community surged toward Despero. The mice seemed to be become one angry body with hundreds of tails and thousands of whiskers and one huge hungry mouth opening and closing and opening and closing, saying over and over and over again, To the dungeon! To the dungeon! To the dungeon! The words pounded through Despero's body with each beat of his heart. Very well, said the most very honored head mouse. You will die then, with a black heart. Threadmaster, he called. Bring out the thread. Despero marveled at his own bravery. He admired his own defiance. And then, reader, he fainted.